Click, click, Jim. Good afternoon, Richard. How are you? I'm very good. I've been uh, waiting for this for quite a while now because we booked you in ages ago, didn't we? We did. It feels... Well, I guess... How many am I? Am I 23? Number 23? You are number 23. Yeah, so we booked it in quite near the beginning. So, yeah, it's nice to finally chat with you. I don't think we've... Have we met? We've never met. Yeah, and so, that's the that's the beauty of the internet and the networks that we're all in. That we're all kind of aware of people and each other and all that kind of stuff. But logistically, we don't always meet. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's quite a, it, you know the the nature of these uh, Facebook lives was actually to, to sort of connect all the community together by some form of um, uh, conversation, and then people can interact and all the rest of it, and it seems to be going really well. So, like, really appreciate you coming on board from there. Can you tell me exactly where you are sat on the planet right now? I am in Brighton, in my flat in Brighton. To the left of me is the sea. Uh, well, beyond my balcony or our balcony, um, and I'm sat in our living room. So, are you based? You're based down in Brighton. All the yeah. time, that's your full-time base, yeah? Okay. Yeah. Well, I work on location. I live in Brighton, though. Yeah, yeah. And that. And have you always been in Brighton? Or is Brighton a place where you've, you've ended, ended up? I moved to Brighton 18 years ago, when I was 18, to go to university. And uh, moved out for a little bit, worked in America for a little bit, travelled around for a bit, but really never... Uh, well, always, it's always home, in it? So I always ended up back here. Where is your hometown? Down in Market. Can you hear a little hint of Norfolk in me? I could just hear it, yeah, because I'm from uh, I'm from near uh, Stansted Airport, from Bishop Stortford. So uh, I know uh, I went to college in Cambridge, so I know down in Market and Ely and uh, what are the King's other Lynn. crazy towns up there? Kings Lynn, Water Beach, March, Excellent. and they're all slightly they're all slightly like that, and they come from like Chatteris, don't they? They come yeah. from Chatteris. Exactly. I'm not even going to try and uh, insult my uh, <laughs> county folk. Actually, I was born in Kent. I, I was born in Chatham. Mean. So I have, uh, well, I was going to do the accent, but I'm just going to leave it, actually. I was born in Chatham, so that's where most of my ah, accent okay. comes from, uh, in Kent. But, uh, but yeah, I grew up in Norfolk, but moved to Brighton. That's a town all, all, all to itself as well, isn't it? Chatham what, and Manchester. Uh, yeah, Chatham's a, um, a kind of ignored town that's now got some stuff going on well it's always had stuff going on but people are actually noticing it now yeah that's right that's right so um were you studying uh photography when you were at uni did that bring you to brighton what was your uh, what has been your inroad because you um are a an architectural photographer and just to give people a bit of an insight so we're getting quite a few viewers on board uh, already jim stevenson is an architectural photographer and it was also the founder of mini click uh, mm. which is a photo talks events um is it a collective or a community a uh, community really yeah i guess it's, it, it's not a collective because we don't really produce work but we yeah. uh, support work yeah your community and um yeah uh, uh, in fact let's let's just talk a bit more about your um coming coming inbound through photo- to photography via uh uni and so you know were you ever a photographer when you were uh growing up were you uh did you use a camera or did you how, how did you come into having a camera in your hand uh i don't know i must have had cameras around me when i was younger but i don't not i'm not one of those photographers who you know has in their bio that I was born with a camera in my hand. I'm not a, <laughs> uh, I, my dad had an Olympus OM10 when I was a kid. So I think when I was a teenager, I played around with that. But I wasn't a photographer at, or I wasn't interested in any more than, you know, anybody was really. Uh, you know, it, was, it wasn't a particular passion of mine. And I went to university to study architecture, which is my passion. Uh, mm-hmm. that was the um that's where you can hear the norfolk accent come through when i say architecture yeah um <laughs> i went to university to do that and I, so i studied in, at brighton um and i came out of uh came out of that and worked in a series of practices in the uk and in america and you know sort of took pictures here and there but never was really never considered it to be even a hobby to be honest um until i was kind of in my mid-20s <laughs> sorry I just had a text message from uh, Jack Latham, who must be watching this, telling me to stop talking about cameras. <laughs> uh, uh, thanks, mate. Um, 
Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, anyway, I met, I worked, worked in for practice in America for an architecture firm there, and my boss was quite a keen photographer. And he used to talk about this idea that if you could, because in architecture, you might spend maybe 10 years designing a building, at least a year for a small building, up to 10 years for something bigger. Um, and he said, if you can spend all that time on it, and really, we're drawing compositions, we're drawing, you know, we're working with composition and scale and things like that, the same things as a photographer does. Um, so if you can spend all that time doing that, you should at least be able to take a picture mm -hmm. of a building. So yeah. I sort of got into photography through him, um, and yeah, through that really. But still, for a, few, like for a long time, for years, I still worked in architecture practices and did pictures here and there. So uh, we're hearing this quite regularly now. Photographers come into photography via mum or dad originally in their yeah. Growing up period of uh, mum and dad always had a camera on holiday or, uh, you know, when people had cameras in the 70s and 80s, um, it was quite a big, you know, that was actually an actual item of the household, you know, the, where's yeah. the camera, you know, and it was always like dad's camera or mum's camera and it was always yeah. used on holiday or special occasions and that kind of thing. So you have hold of it, but also um, people are coming inbound via design and definitely architecture i'm hearing this quite a lot and it and, <laughs> and um i'm speaking for myself i'm appalling at drawing and uh drawing and uh, i'm i'm good at design but i can't physically put something on a page uh, yeah. i can't draw and using the camera for me was a, a godsend because i was able to <laughs> show what was going through my eyeballs uh, and I could sort of compute it. So I'm hearing <clears throat> that quite a lot. You're the first architectural type photographer that we've had on board. I'm really interested in that. Well, and, what it uh, is, we... is, I guess, Sorry, go on. <clears throat> the thing with that is coming from different backgrounds. I mean, some people got into photography because they love photography or they love the act of taking pictures or something like that, or, or they or they spent their formative years looking at beautiful pictures in... I was listening to Abby yesterday, her talking about looking at in the independent and... Mm. and and you know photojournalism and things like that i mean for my my first relationships with photography were looking at posters of kenny dalgleish and other footballers it wasn't my relationship with photography didn't develop until i was in my sort of late 20s i photograph architecture because i love architecture and yeah. that for several reasons uh i didn't want to work in the industry anymore um so photography really is my way of of, of you know connecting with the thing that i'm most passionate about i don't i don't photograph you know i don't photograph horses or weddings or stuff like that i mean because <laughs> i'm not interested in them i do like weddings and i've not nothing against horses but you, do you know what i mean i photograph yeah. what i love and because i'm a commercial photographer i'm doing it you know every week several times a week so it's you have to it, i have to love it um so yeah i'm really coming from an architectural background and just continuing my relationship with that industry and there's a lot of obviously there's a lot of form and um, process that that is already instilled into you in architecture, isn't there? That that already yeah. then you can translate it into using it in your photographic process. I've got a few people coming on board here, and um, Grant Scott he says, "Hi Jim, one eye on you and another on the game. Do you need updates? I've forgotten who's playing today. Uh, it's uh, Egypt, Uruguay. So I wouldn't oh. mind knowing if Mo Salah's stayed fit." Are they? Uh, oh no, you're a Liverpool fan, aren't you? I am, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, Grant, so let, let us know oh, when yeah. we get goal. Yeah, <laughs> half of Liverpool running around with uh, Egypt shirts on, I, I reckon. Yeah. Um, so, uh, oh, Richard Chivers. Hey, Jim, hey, looking good. <laughs> Thanks, mate. And, uh, oh, great. Craig, brilliant. Nice plants, Jim had craig on the other day he's fantastic oh, thanks man a great chat there yeah I, I saw a bit of craig's yeah good to see you mate and uh yeah grant's on it i'm on it <laughs> it's, it's still nil nil grant yeah <laughs> i mean i watched the i watched uh, the part of the russia game with the saudis it's it's very uh odd watching two completely autonomous states playing football together <laughs> yeah there's a um this World Cup is a difficult one to watch if you're a Guardian lefty liberal like me. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. There's uh, it's a lot difficult of one to fully on. immerse yourself in and enjoy. <clears throat> I especially like Putin's. Um, uh, Putin had a reception yesterday for all like oh. the heads of state who all turned up, and it was like a who's who, but basically it was just business being done, you know. Who's who of evil pricks? It, it oh, was. I like to swear. 
Well, you just did, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course you can. So right. um, let's go back to the photography again. So, um, yeah. you know, we're talking about your architectural practice. I'd love to talk about that first and we can talk about other yeah. things because I think that um, a lot of people can learn a lot from you um, in how you approach your subjects and how you approach your photography. So what I'd like to do is bring um, – I'm going to bring this onto oh, the screen. And um, if I can just get this all a bit of technology all in the right place. But, um, nice. This is your um, architectural um, album. Uh, that's one of the albums on my website, yeah. One of the albums, yeah. So I thought it might be quite good to um, swerve through this because um, – let me just get back on the right page and then I can see what I'm seeing. See, it's all seamless. Yeah, it's no, all I'm, totally I'm, seamless, you know. I I've can got fill a, in the gaps with a joke if you want or something. <laughs> yeah. So could you f fill me in on a little bit for, if we browse through some of your work? I mean, people can go straight to uh, Jim's website, mm -hmm. which is um, clickclickjim.com. And, in fact, I'm going to put that. My number one tip for people getting into the photography industry is think really carefully about what you kill yourself because you have yeah. to live with it for the rest of your life. Oh, it's very, very memorable. Lick, click, Jim. Jesus. Um, yeah. Have, I'm you, not have you gone off it? I don't like it, but I can't get rid of it now. Because okay, can't... then we're going to leave it on the screen for a bit, then, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think it's your... important. I think it's memorable. But that's how I remember you. Click, click, Jim. It is memorable, and I did yeah. at least no, – no one had that Twitter handle or that Instagram handle, so that's handy. Um, but this album that you're looking through now is kind of an – is the overview of my commercial work. And yeah. um, it's kind of just a, for clients to go and look at to see uh, the type of projects that I've shot and the people who I've worked for, I guess, really. Yeah. Um, what I talk about a lot with my work, though, is – is even my work's commercial commissioned work um but i talk about storytelling a lot so other parts of my website them you know have specific projects and we you can go through sort of 10 images of a specific project mm -hmm. and um can you see the cat attempting I to can see the this? cat the cat's made a, a a great entrance there has the cat got a name but tell me it's named off it's probably named after a, a, a famous architect is it norman or something no. like that <laughs> It's Fury. We've got two cats, Flash and Fury. Fury. <laughs> named after Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. Well, this is the first animal that we've had on on these, so that's uh, that's pretty outstanding. I, I, um, what I want people to do in the future is to bring an animal along and up the game. And by the end of this, we're going to end up with like a giraffe <laughs> poking its head through the window or something. So hello, we, Fury. Yeah, he's di completely disinterested. But yeah, anyway. For, um, uh my well, what, the, the point i'm making jim is that i would want to the questions that we get are getting is getting commission work a lot of the time right. and and listening to how you know you're you're well commissioned and and uh people um you, you need a nudge in the right direction and i'm finding a lot with photographers and i, I expect you do via mini click is that the practice of going out and getting hired or selling yourself is a big stumbling block for lots of people. So um, if we could sort of talk uh, in that direction as well, that'd be massively helpful. You can talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Um, I mean, the thing, the thing about photography, is it's not, it's not rocket science that getting work. I know it's difficult and I know certain social anxieties uh, and confidence factors might stop you from going out and getting work but you do literally, in in the beginning you do literally have to go out and get work it's very unusual to have a photographer that's so exceptional who can exist as an island and mm. so when i first started out and, and to an extent still now i'm making sure that i'm out there and people know who i am i'm active on social media and it's not aggressive I'm, hopefully it's not aggressive mm. I'm not you know i'm not chucking business cards in people's faces but i, I you know i go to uh, events and lectures and and you know I go to them predominantly because I'm interested in them because it's my passion um, but also I meet people there and people remember that I'm alive and I don't stand in front of them going commission me give me work but that's all you can really hope for really is is to keep people um, let people remember that you're alive and and the, the thing is when you're talking to I mean most of my work comes directly from architects um, uh, I get a bit of editorial as well work, but most of it's directly from architects. Um, and when you're talking to these people, if architects or photo editors or any gallerists or anyone who's commissioning photography at the moment, 
it's not a inconvenience for them to talk uh, with you about your work because they're, they're passionate, they're involved. No one's involved in photography because it's a gold mine. <laughs> Everyone's involved <laughs> in it because they're passionate about it. So it, it, all of these people that you that you think you sort of you have you hesitate or you might not want to you might not want to disturb with an email or a phone call or you might not want to go and chat to if you see them across the room they, they all want to hear about it they, they're all interested in in the subject matter you're all in the same area or in the same industry for for good reason so it's finding a way to to not um to get over that idea that actually we're an inconvenience to these people they need us more than we need them as well, frankly, um, yeah. so, or as much, maybe not more, but, you know, as much. So finding a way to, to, to get over that a little bit and, and put yourself out there, and it can be a bit scary and a bit intimidating, but really that's the only way to do it initially is to put yourself out there. And the, the other flip side of that is, or the same side of the coin of that is, you see countless photographers who perhaps aren't necessarily the most talented photographers, but do very well out of the industry because they're very good at getting out there. And, the reverse is true. You see a lot of photographers who are exceptional, but just that haven't managed to get over that uh, that block of putting themselves out there. Yeah, I think that you know, creative people tend to be can be quite introverted, actually. Yeah, and that 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 is uh, partly part of the barrier of approaching somebody in a room and going in cold. Oh, hi, my name is. Yeah, I do this. Oh my god, this is excruciating. So I kind of hear that a lot. I think that you made a really good point at the beginning which was you you're remembering that uh, sorry you're reminding people that you're alive yeah and i think that's really yeah. important with going about things on especially on social media with uh, putting out always having a reason to be on it so if you have a new photo or a new thing that you're doing or a, you're chatting it, it shouldn't just be blather it, it should always be you're reminding them that you're actually alive and you're giving them a bit of value of yourself all the time so that's interesting i've got a few people making some comments here which are really great first of all kirstian kirstian hacker that is an amazing name but um she's got rats so maybe we'll sh have her on the next one rats is I quite totally good. although we're going down that. sized i want to go up sized you know well, i think you know we're going to go from cat dog baboon uh, and then work our way through cow. You know, I really want people to think out the box with creative minds, you know. And Kirsten adds, good advice. Networking is really hanging out with people who have similar interests. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, networking is one of the most damaging. Well, I think it's probably done more damage to any to any creative as anything else because it is. it sounds frightening, networking. But it is exactly what uh, Kirsten just said. It is, it's just hanging out with people who are interested in the same thing as you. Yeah. Um, hashtag networking. networking Siobhan. Siobhan. Hey, exactly. Siobhan. So is Siobhan, Siobhan's a, a colleague of yours? No, she's a family member. She ah. is my wife's cousin. Oh, there you go. So nice good. to see you, Siobhan. Kirsten has some big rats. That's very good. Okay. The I London hope rat. someone's just joining this conversation. And they're thinking, right, okay. I think <laughs> we've joined the Zoological Society uh, version of this. So let's have a bit more of a flick through. Obviously, you've got... Um, was it so plenty of selection here but what i do like about it i think this picture is that you look from a completely different angle of photographing a solid object instead yeah. of photographing the obvious well there's a there's a um uh incidentally i don't know if he's watching or not but i sometimes think this is brian david stevens in this picture i don't think i don't think it is but i can't be totally sure right um, <laughs> uh uh what's i gonna say um yeah, there was. We had a mini click talk. So mini click feeds into my work quite a lot because I didn't have a photography education. So mini click is essentially my photography education. And um, Matt Stewart did a talk for us oh, years ago, and yeah, it's brilliant. And he gave us an. Um, he showed us this. Or he told me or put me onto this film by Nick Turpin called Insight, named after his um, the uh, agency that he runs. And in it, he'd interviewed a series of street photographers, and one of the street photographers was in New York, and he talks in the interview about how the his method of working and it's he talks about how he places something that he knows isn't going to change in the frame and then waits for everything else to be in the right place okay yeah. and when he said that that was like a light bulb turning yeah. on because for me architecture is 99 percent of the time isn't going to move anywhere so i can place that in the frame and then wait for all the variables to be in the right place so in, in almost all of my work particularly my work with people because uh, pe people documenting people using space is really 
the sort of tagline of my company um it's my interest really i'm really just composing around that so in this image of salagas Cano's serpentine pavilion you know i set that image up because i quite like the mouth of this building poking out and the trees behind give it some context you know you're in yeah. high park and then i'm just waiting for somebody to do something interact with that in some way um so that's a, a lot there's a little bit of cinematic uh behavior that comes to, to mind you. with me although you, you know you're taking a still image there's a that process of of a scene of shooting a scene and then things move in and out you know a, a, yeah a, um i've seen it a little bit with um, my favorite one of my favorite uh, directors and he's photographer is anton Corbin. yeah and he, he's massive on that he's mm. really massive on that uh, and uh, as are other there are other directors but uh, as an example he's just one of well, those people that can nail it I think I know it's a bit slight like, cliche at the moment to talk about Wes Anderson and his compositions because everyone's doing ah, yes. videos, but he's a great example of uh, of someone who uh, uses that, you know, so much of the time his his shots are locked off or they're just mm. quite slow tracks, Symm symmetry, verticals, all the things that play into my work. And, and then you just have a movement, a person moving in and out of the frame or something happens. And so I talk a lot about, the, if you just hold on that image for a second, that I talk yeah. a lot when I, about, when I'm talking about my work, I talk about patience a lot because mm -hmm. because I am afforded the luxury of being able to hold something in the frame and wait for all the variables. I'll have to stand there. I can stand there for hours, really, and wait for the light to be right and people. But my limit of my patience is normally about 40 minutes. So if you see any photographs with me in them, like this one here that you've got on screen, uh, that you know that I've been standing there with a tripod waiting for something to happen for 40 minutes. <laughs> and I've thought, fuck it, I'm going to put it on self-time. <laughs> And ran in and done the picture instead yeah yeah we've, i think we've all been there in the end but yeah, yeah. i know I, I know where this you're coming guy, from with this that i came dressed tonally as the building which was perfect yeah that's fantastic thank you yeah i, I love it yeah the, and where the predominantly are these images used uh, in online and brochures i assume uh, mostly in the press in architecture press so um websites like design or the Architects mm -hmm. Journal, or um, uh, Icon, any number of different magazines um, that you can find in your local WH Smiths um, will be using these, and, and big, big blogs like Dezine and places like that. I mean, it's largely, by and large, commissioned by the uh, architects because the bottom fell out of the editorial industry. I've got a couple yeah. of editorial clients, but mainly um, direct commercial commissions, um, and, then they, and then the images get distributed to... Uh, to press and i have an agent who deals with my archive who sends these images out to different press uh, and, and publishers if someone's doing a book on mm -hmm. museums for instance in that image you've got up there um they might run that sure yeah i understand and do, you know obviously you said the arse had dropped out the editorial side then subsequently are you making any money on post sales on on those images or is it very limited yeah you I don't mean, mind I'm me not. asking i just like that there's a there's a, just a big comparison now where we've flipped the whole thing's flipped around no mate I, you can ask me anything at all mm -hmm. and anyone on the comments can ask me any question i am totally feeling very much like i'm gonna overshare today so anything yeah, you want to ask me in fun. fact let's um, just remind people thanks so much for watching this quite a lot of people viewers um, on board if you've got any questions please stick them into the comments right now please any questions for jim all right go go for any it, questions um yeah so editorial yeah i've got i've got a couple of editorial clients who are really great actually um the architects journal is one of them and that i they they we've been working together for long enough they sort of trust me and we do some really I, some of my favorite work is with them mm -hmm. um but um yeah editorial isn't it's not what it used to be every photographer knows that, don't they um mm -hmm. these days and the, and the commercial fees that i get are significantly higher than editorial fees so you have to kind of love the project that you're doing for the editorial stuff um what did you say? Yeah, post sales. Most of my post sales are, are, you know, the benefit of doing architectural photography is in any building, there'll be the architect who probably commissioned me, but you'll have the builder, the lighting designer, the furniture designers, the, any number of different people who will all want images as well. So most of my post sales come from that, coming from yeah. other suppliers wanting in on the pictures and buying licenses for them. Um, and in addition, uh, View, my agency, sell to um publications but it's not a it's not a significant part of my income yeah. it's a, a nice bit of bonus money. it's a nice uh, byproduct of isn't it yeah mm. um craig is asking do you find most work comes from word of mouth Jim? 
Uh, yeah, I, I, quite a lot of it. Yeah, it's kind of a word of mouth or credited, being credited, which I guess is another form of word of mouth. So people will see my images in a magazine or a lot, increasingly on Instagram now, um, which is why you have to really be insistent on those edits, on those credits, sorry. Um, yeah. So a lot of it comes from that. And, and, and I do get quite a few emails from people saying, oh, you know, so-and-so recommended you, wondering if you could work with us on a project. Um, so yeah, definitely most of my work is word of mouth. I don't advertise in a sort of traditional sense. Um, I mean, you could count social media as advertising, but in a sort of buying advertising space, I don't do that. So yeah, all, almost all of it is word of mouth. Yeah. Yo, Jim. <laughs> hey, mate. <laughs> Apologies for interrupting. I remember a train journey with you to Cambridge quite a few years ago, where you would you described a dislike for taking photos or the rigmarole of cameras, but. You wish you could just blink instead. Still the same? That is an excellent memory, Andy. Um, yeah, um, Andy's a, a very talented architect and artist who I work with quite a lot. Um, uh, yeah, no, I, I'm not a big fan of cameras. I'm not really into the to the gadgetry of photography at all. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in a sense, you know, because my like I said earlier, my passion is in the architecture. So it, it's in a sense the camera is a barrier really in one way to me enjoying the architecture. You know, it's something that is physically between my face and the building and mm -hmm. it's in the way of me experiencing it. And also I'm documenting something that's intended to be experienced as a three dimensional thing. And I'm, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm stuck behind a camera doing it. Um, so I, I do sort of wish that uh, I could blink and do the pictures that I wanted to instead and actually just walk around the space and kind of ironically, that conversation that Andy and I had on a train to Cambridge once was a long time ago. And that technology, I guess now exists. So I probably could yeah. do that with Snapchat glasses or something. But, um, <laughs> so I guess I was probably being a bit reactionary, but that's actually that project there is one of Andrew's projects that you're showing there. Um, but yeah, in a sense, uh, I was probably being a bit reactionary, but I, I do kind of f feel that the cumbersome nature of cameras, it, it does kind of interrupt my process. My process isn't uh, involved in gadgetry or, or cameras or, or isn't sort of deliberately uh, involved in that. They're a necessity there at all. Yeah. Same as a writer wouldn't really, I guess writers have their favourite pens, but nobody ever asks a writer what pen are you using, do they? No. Uh, you would get a lot of hostility, you know, but there's a, it would either be a paper mate, a Bic or a Parker, surely. <laughs> they haven't I'm not got much that. choice. It's, it's Nikon or Canon all over again. Isn't or it? a <laughs> um, Trav, looking oh, good, hey, chaps. Hey. Great to see images as you chat. Yes, Trav, uh, I've now mastered the arts of the darkest of the arts, and uh, we can now see uh, work on the screen. So... Trying to get you back was from Vietnam. We can uh, we can do we, we can do some more stuff when you get your projects uh, up to date, and and we'll be able to show them a bit more, Trav. Okay. I really enjoyed Travis. I know I commented on it already. I know you know this, but you posted a picture on Facebook recently, and that looking for or two pictures looking for people to choose which one they thought worked better, and the response you got was incredible. What an amazing community! Yeah. Uh, the the co the feedback you got off that was just quite beautiful, actually. Um, I'm in quite an emotional space at the moment, so I, it, I got it, a little bit it made uh, emotional. Me cry, <laughs> but it's lovely, and uh, both pictures, incidentally, Travis, were incredible. Uh, really interesting to see the work you're doing out there at the moment. I chose both, Jim. Did you? I went for yeah, B. I couldn't make my mind up. I thought that they work as a um, a, a diptych. Even there was Different something about work. yeah, because it was. Um, I don't know. One of them, I quite liked it being quite a little bit off guard, actually. Yeah something about it so yeah it's like uh personal well, photography is personal taste isn't it with everything else. Exactly. I think that, exactly. but um getting all that feedback from from all those people that's fantastic hmm. rupert's asking you do you see mini click expanding to other parts of the country and a bit like the bjp morphing um morphing into 1854 where hmm. do you see mini click going in the future <sighs> Um, it has started to. Thanks, Rupert. I think Rupert uh, is a Brighton master. person. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. He yeah. comes to MiniClick, a big supporter of MiniClick. Um, oh, I see. Okay. Uh, as well, and a very talented photographer. Um, uh, yeah. Um, so I think you probably know this, Rupert, about the we've expanded into Leeds. So MiniClick now exists, founded in Brighton, and still exists in Brighton, and it's kind of our home. Um, we've also got a 
group or we've got we've got Roz in Leeds who's running everything out of there with the help of Bryony uh, and then uh, we're sort of talking to Simon and Sylvia uh, Simon Cross and Sylvia Koalish oh, so sorry Sylvia I just completely butchered your surname uh, in Edinburgh who <laughs> we're working on and off with who we're, we're doing some talks with them which is great so we've kind of got Edinburgh Leeds and Brighton we've got a group in London there's uh, Christina and Lou and Joe, who all live in London. Um, yeah. But there's kind of a feeling that, you know, Photo Forum is great in London, and we have a lot of crossover with Photo Forum in terms of who we uh, get to speak, um, that maybe actually our efforts might be better put into doing things outside of London and, um, mm. you know, continuing to do stuff as, uh, you know, in different parts of the country. So we kind of, I definitely would like to see it open up a bit. I guess in terms of morphing into something or, or becoming different or a bigger thing, we all have there's nine of us in the team now um and we all have ideas about what we want to do with it but it's really down to time i mean i don't think everyone i know rupert knows but i don't think everyone realizes that mini click is we do that in our spare time it's um you know it, it, so it's really down to how much work we've each got on or what family commitments we've got and and how much we can do We'd, i'd love it to become something much bigger and, and the ideal thing if you live in brighton there's a shop called beyond retro um that um have got an amazing space it's a second-hand clothes shop it's a good shop but they've got this most the most incredible space and i i want that space to right. turn in a gallery and talk space so a lottery a lottery win and <laughs> th th then we'll take it from there yeah as soon as you start looking at any form of real estate or um as you well know in your field uh shop fronts spaces and staff are just a killer um so but you yeah. can't do it without a community so you've got a great community and i'm sure that at some point you'll be able to sort of channel it into uh, it being a physical space which is which is cool mm. um i've got uh, a great question here from richard shivers hi jim yeah. this might be a question for later but you say you have a passion for architecture more than photography but you must hold a real passion for photography with the amount of work you put into mini click. So yeah. It kind of um, follows on. Yeah. I, I mean, I do. I mean, it's not, it's obviously it's not black and white just because I'm passionate about architecture doesn't mean I don't care about uh, photography. Obviously I care about photography a great deal. And, um, and that's, uh, um, yeah, I do have a real interest in photography. I, I mean, uh, but I had no education in it at all. So when I started mini click, I think Rich might have been at some of the early ones as well. When I started Mini Click in 2010, so I, nearly it was September 2010, so nearly eight years ago, um, it was I, I really didn't know anything about photography. On it, really honestly, people would tell me names of people of famous photographers, and it just was everything was like the learning curve was so steep. It was brilliant. I absolutely loved it. It was such a it, so exciting to hear about all these people. It, it was like being in my first few weeks of a of a degree course or an a level in photography or something um so really the first speakers we had were um were friends who i knew um mm -hmm. or people whose work i'd seen locally um and and it sort of grew from there so i uh, so yeah my continued interest in mini click is, is partly or my continued interest in photography is partly because it's a continuing continuation of my education in photography mm -hmm. um and also a lot of it comes from the fact that we've got i've got this amazing team that I work with now and the enthusiasm that comes from them and the discovery of new things. I mean, I had a meeting uh, on Wednesday night with Bryony who tends to head up most of the Brighton stuff now. And I oh, was just, just swapping photographers and, and ideas and things like that. And, and I've just this morning been chatting with Roz who does the leads talks for us. Um, so there's a lot of, um, uh, yeah, there's a lot of excitement for, I still have a lot of excitement for photography, but I think what I have that I think I might not, I might have had, but I might not have had if I'd done an education in it is I still have a sort of slightly naive excitement around photography. I'm definitely not, uh, too disheartened or, you know, I'm not like maybe some other people my age have sort of, uh, disgruntled with the industry <laughs> now. I've still got a kind of naive, uh, excitement for it, which I hopefully, is, is basically what keeps mini click going because there's no money mm. in it we're doing it we all do it like i said in our spare time so we it have hasn't to... broken you yet not yet yeah <laughs> <Keep> <laughs> i've just put half an hour 
just put up another uh, architectural album because I I, I really I, I had a good flick through this and I, I really liked it so I just w wanted to <laughs> show some people um, some of the images as we're talking there's a great question that's come in uh, this is from Ferrari World in Abu this Dhabi a, a Ferrari theme park Ferrari in the world desert in Abu Dhabi it was I, uh, nuts. there <laughs> um, yeah Siobhan's asking you do you have a favorite project that you have worked on Ah, oh, Siobhan, that's like, that's probably like asking, you know, a parent who their favourite kid is. Um, uh, it changes all the time. At the moment, I've, I'm really enjoying the work that I've been doing with Piers Taylor lately. Um, and Piers is quite an interesting architect in the sense, in the, um, he believes in a sort of very local way of working. And, uh, um, you know, he's not interested in doing big flashy office blocks or houses for very rich people. He's more interested in a, uh, uh, a different idea of architecture and, and that kind of aligns quite nicely with my own, you know, social and political feelings. So I've been really enjoying that aspect. And there's, they're not on my website yet, but on my Instagram, there's some pictures of a, a low cost home that he designed recently that I did some pictures of. Um, uh, so yeah, I'm really enjoying that. And also at the moment I'm working on a documentary, actually it's on, it's about peers, but I'm working with a journalist called Laura Mark on a documentary that I'm very much enjoying working on. I think it's now at the edit stage, which is quite nice. So yeah, really the, the projects I enjoy the most are either the projects that are totally weird and bizarre, like the one on screen now, the Ferrari world in Abu Dhabi, which was nuts, or the projects that have that sort of aligned with my, with my own socialist uh, blood. <laughs> How many, um, yeah. uh, so you were hired by Ferrari World or were you shooting that as an editorial piece? No, that was for Benoit who were listed in the, in the credits there. They're the architects of it. Oh, so Benoit, can... sorry. Yes, yes, just seen down the bottom. Yeah, that was a commission from them. So you flew out, what, for, you, you must have spent like a week there maybe? They had a couple of projects in Dubai as well. So I did, uh, and I worked with a filmmaker called Ed Bishop who I work with quite a lot. Um, mm -hmm. on this project so we flew out we were probably 10 days we did two projects in Dubai and a project in Abu Dhabi and wow. then on the way back we flew to Kiev and did a project in Kiev and then came home busy busy yeah I love yeah. it I just thought I'd put it up on the screen I, I, I think thank you get quite into that now uh, also um, you were shooting in fact yeah that's why I fished this this album out so if we can just um we're just going to put this up now. As you can see, there's an image up there of um, the, shard. The, the shard. Now, the reason why I put it up there was because um, I'm asked this a lot, and I would like your expert help as well. Mm -hmm. uh, shooting at night, buildings at night. What, would you what like advice to can you give people for shooting buildings at night? All right. Um, so, first of all generally speaking you're not shooting buildings at night you're shooting buildings at dusk because by the time night has come and by the time the sky is black there's no ambient light to illuminate any element of the architecture mm -hmm. so you just end up with the top half of the shot is just black there may be a reason why you want that to be like that but generally speaking you're not really covering the architecture there because it's just fading into the darkness so it, so generally speaking start with the terminology of dusk shots rather than night shots mm -hmm. and you're in a good place um, and then it's long exposures, really, um, and just measuring that exposure for the highlights and the and the shadows. But um, but yeah, yes, you've got that little window of about half an hour where the dusk is in a really nice state, and and you've still got some ambient light to illuminate the building. But the sky is starting to get dark, and the and the lights on the inside of the building are coming out. But that shot there totally breaks everything I just said. That shot was probably about 11 o'clock at night and I've been in the pub, the Market Porter, which is probably to the yeah. left of camera, right of camera there. He's yeah. a friend of mine, Tom, and came out and it was all sort of foggy and misty. It looked great. So that shot is an anomaly for what I just said, uh, but that was a kind of general rule of thumb. Go Are you always dust. shooting on digital? Yes. Yeah. Let's just have a quick flick through here. Oh, animals, brilliant. <laughs> so I don't know what happened there, but that's... It, that's a, actually supposed to be a video of a piece of architecture that I did. And for some reason, it keeps flipping back to this picture of this ape, uh, which is lovely. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. I love the way that you look at the buildings. I'm, I'm a real fan of architecture. I love it. And uh, yeah, I always uh, 
because you do put up quite a lot of images on your Insta and a uh, little on Twitter as well. So yeah. I'm always like, I'm interested in that because I like architecture and see what projects you're, you're working on. But there are, there's some also some stuff that you, um, uh, you shoot video. Okay. I do a so, lot of film. Yeah. Yeah. yeah which I was, uh, because we've, we've been talking a little bit about that on some of these uh, live, mm. um, because, what people don't understand is actually the, um, you know, you you might be actually doubling up, so you're shooting stills, and also then you're shooting, you're having to shoot some video as well. So run mm. us through your process of your just your process of doing that. Do you are you running around shooting stills first, and then you shoot you some vid, or or sometimes it's one or the other? Is that right? No, I'm. How do I'm, you go about? I would say half, at least half of my commissions now require some sort of video content um, from the client. Um, oh, that's not the best video. That was a difficult brief, that one that you're showing there. Um, uh, yeah, what was I saying? Um, yeah, at least half of them require some video content. So I, and I will tend to shoot video and stills at the same time. It's the same camera, and quite yeah. often the composition for the video is pretty similar to the composition for the stills. So I will shoot both. Um, as I'm running at the same time. So a lot of the video are locked off shots. Some of them have, uh, but also some of them have some movement or a drone shot or something like that. And um, like this, a lot of this stuff is really a study in composition rather than uh, rather than a sort of narrative journey through the building on yeah. this film. Um, that's really so distracting, trying to watch, the, trying to tell you something while watching that because I haven't watched that film for ages. Um, but the process of my work really is, is I try and work, um very slowly and calmly so uh there's nobody needs 500 images of that uh building or 500 shot pieces of video of it so uh, i will try and find ways to work slowly so i'll turn up do a bit of a recce walk around decide what elements i want to highlight and which what are the key design pieces of design intent um how is the building being used uh what interesting competitions there are and i will um and then I'll and then I'll go around and pick that up for the rest of the day. But it, trying to find a method to work slowly is quite difficult when you know you've got a day to do something. Usually it's a day, so I do things like um, I take my shoes off when I'm shooting because I have to walk a little slower. So I'm not because I have to watch where I'm going. Anything I can do if I have to shoot barefoot because it slows me down, then anything I can do to slow myself down helps a lot. Or I'll have an assistant just giving me a little nudge every now and again um because it's not necessarily my natural state but it definitely creates my best work if i'm working slowly so i've kind of got to a situation now in my work which took a, a long time and isn't a finished process but when i'm i'm pretty confident now when i'm going into a shoot uh, that i'm going to get what i want out of it um and i'm pretty confident that i don't and with that confidence means i don't have to shoot i don't have to machine gun with a camera and take several hundred photographs I can really focus on getting the best bits done properly. And that applies to doing film work as well. And then obviously if I'm doing a film, I like to have an interview with the architect or the designer or the end user or something like that. So I'll spend half an hour doing a little interview as well. So uh, Siobhan says, too many to choose from. They are all so wonderful. There you go. <laughs> Thank That's you, really Siobhan. Nice. And uh, this is great from Craig. What I like about your photographs, Jim, is that the architecture is secondary as you read the image. It's not the only or prime focus. I think too many photographers use that old idea that it's a, that it's a shame to ruin a building by putting people in it. Yeah, that's a bit of a bone of contention, I think. With well, It's not a bone of contention, is it? But it's, a, it's something that uh, I never understood. I spent years, almost a decade, designing buildings um because i've been doing this since i was i've been working in design since i was 16 so uh, des i spent almost yeah actually i spent a decade designing buildings and when you're designing them you're designing around human scale and and use and purpose and 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 you're tr it, ultimately you're trying to make somebody's life better that's the idea between, behind architecture the improvement mm -hmm. of somebody's life uh, it's sort of purest and finest um and so it makes no sense then to go and photograph it and, and remove all the people out of it. It makes no sense at all. So really, for me, what I, I, what I would like to do, my ideal kind of situation when photographing is to have the architecture of some sort of 
backdrop or stage for for the life and the activity that's happening around it so that's really nice of you to notice craig because that's really it's nice to hear that kind of thing and there are occasions when i would when i like to photograph with no people in and, and or, or i like photographs with no people in but it has to be for a very specific purpose it has to be because maybe the architecture is a particular is particularly sculptural or something like that and mm -hmm. i'm trying to highlight that and there's a photographer called um Hélène binet whose work is really good at that a lot of her work doesn't have any people in but her use of light and uh, particularly her black and white images her tonal quality of her images are, are fantastic um so it's not a hard and fast rule but generally speaking i'm much happier or I'm much yeah much happier photographing buildings with with people in yeah it's a it's a much better um you know to just to at least have some human contact with it yeah and also just from a practical point of view it demonstrates scale of the building and use yeah. and uh but really i i want it to be uh a degree of backdrop of life. There's some really great images that the Architectural Review commissioned by Tony Ray Jones in the late 60s or 70s, early 70s, sorry. Tony Ray Jones, the great British documentarian, not an architectural photographer, but they commissioned him to go and photograph uh, places like Thamesmead in London when it was being built, a lot of the new wave of British housing or particularly London housing. And they're fantastic. They're just, the, the architecture is, you know, if you just looked at it solely as an architectural image, the competition's a bit odd because, but it's because really he's photographing the life and and the yeah. art backdrop to all of that, and that's kind of something to aspire to, I think, for me anyway. Yeah, he's a, he was amazing. He's amazing. Yes. He's one of my favourites. Yeah. So, have um, you got any influences of other photographers now that you've come on board to being a photographer yourself? You didn't have that originally, but have you come? sort of full circle are you now collecting inspirational people that you always look at and read and uh, that kind of stuff um in terms of you know my own photography yeah i mean there's other architectural photographers who's work i mean there's a guy called ewan barn ewan barn um he's a dutch photographer who sort of came into the scene about 10 years ago and he was the first really to to really come to the forefront with this more sort of documentary style of photographing architecture which definitely paved a little path for, for me and for others who photograph in my style, or not my style, but you know, a state, the same style as me. Um, so his work is always, you know, was always quite important. But I mean, really, most of my inspiration now is coming from TV and films and other places. I think a lot of photographers are the same. I mean, the first photo book that I got was hugely influential. It was uh, uh, Morris Brumfield's photographs, which is um, which is a you know a catalogue of his work published by photo eight years ago but his work he photographed you know british industry you see this yeah uh, he was photographing british industry in the 60s and 70s but you know i mean look at that these are commercial these are commissioned commercial work that's not yeah. an art project or a documentary project that uh, and for me you know to look at his work and think you know he's photographing industry which isn't that far from what i'm photographing and and as a commercial photographer but he's photographing it like that and how does that compare to like you know the work of film noir directors you know the, ah. the his use of light and shadow is like basically these books run parallel with each other even though the subject matter is completely the opposite so that's yeah. my inspiration will come from all different places i mean i mean this is i if you can still get this book i don't know if john's got any copies of it left. it's i mean it's so worth it it's really these are, you know this is that's on a commission it's not uh he hasn't spent hours setting up some an art or or, or you know or a no, documentary project that's just on a commission from a, man, a uk manufacturer it's incredible work so his work was quite a big influence on me or quite exciting at least got me going but really you take your influences from everywhere we had the second ever mini clip was by a guy called chris mitchell who does a lot of fashion work and he works on um he does a lot of runway stuff for the fashion shows and and he was talking about how when you're photographing models coming down the runway, what the designer wants um, to demonstrate the silhouette of the outfit is the model to be astride. So you have their legs astride, which I'd never heard before. But when you look at my work now, if you and since then, if you see any people in my work, I'm trying to show a silhouette of a person. So I'm if they're walking, I try and have them astride. It's little things like that. Your inspirations come from from everywhere, don't they? Yeah. Um, and film and TV as well is is a big thing. Little, little tips and tricks from every from every uh, every type of photographer all the time. Absolutely, as you can probably see beside me, um, yeah, I have a, like a, an obsession 
with uh, photo books and, and photographers and I'm always learning and using them as mini Bibles almost, you know, just to pick up something from somewhere. And I always uh, will always like use some little tactic or something that I see that somebody else has used. It's the only way forward, I think, which brings yeah. us to your uh, community. Now, I wanted to bring it onto the screen just to give it a bit of a plug, your mini click. Oh, so can you um, give us a, a, a quick distilled version of how it came about? Okay. Um, so Why? Mini -click started, <laughs> mini -click started in September 2008. Alex Bamford was the first ever speaker. Def if you're watching this now, or however many people are watching this, Low, all the thousands of people are watching this. Thousands, um, Jim. Yeah, thousands. thousands. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Um, uh, yeah, if you um, look, look at Alex Bamford's work, because it's fantastic. But he was the first ever speaker, September 2010. Um, and it started because I was part of an organization called Design Brighton, and we used to put on uh, free uh, design talks, design and architecture, typography, graphic design talks in Brighton. And <laughs> Um, each one was named, uh, you know, if we did a typography one, it was named Bright Type. And if we did a uh, graphic design, it was called Bright, I don't actually can't remember what it was called, Bright Graphic or something stupid. But, um, and then we came to do, a, they asked me to curate a photography one and I called, and we ended up calling it Bright Click. And, um, and at the time. We were actually the, live in the mini click group. There we uh, go. It is well met. Um <laughs> At the time, uh, and it might still be, I'm not sure because I can't remember my login anymore, but the Brighton Flickr group was quite popular. Uh, there was a Brighton community, photographer's community Flickr group, and that was kind of the first initial uh, seed place of MiniClick. And someone in one of the feeds said it'd be great to see more of these photography talks, and they said it'd be great to see some MiniClicks after BrightClick. And um, yeah. I think it was a guy called Andrew White, I'm not sure if it was definitely him, but I think it was him. Um, and that became the name. And then it sort of came from there. And it really came out of, it wasn't, a, I hadn't really planned it. It just, I just thought, well, I'll put the first four on. I chose four photographers, Alex Bamford, Jean-Luc Bruard, Chris Mitchell and Ruby May Alcock. And they came and did uh, a talk September, October, November, December. And there was a huge turnout for them. Uh, really great community. Everyone went to the pub afterwards. It just carried on this fantastic conversations. So we did another four and then another four. And then after a year, Lou Miller, she came and joined MiniClick and it all just sort of blew up from there. And now it's a much bigger, a much bigger thing. Grant, uh, Grant Scott has kindly done a link. So this is the, uh, the book that you showed, Morris Broomfield. Oh, thanks, Grant. Morris Broomfield photographs. And yes. it is on Amazon. So you guys can go and uh, fish that out. Try there. and buy it from a good tax-paying company like Photo Away. Independent, uh, yeah, get to <laughs> for, it, uh, uh, always look at, that's what I always do. I always look at all the in independent shops um, or second-hand stores, charity charity shops, and then if I can't get hold of it, the, if the Goliath of Amazon. If anyone's in Brighton at the moment, or Hove specifically, on George Street, one of the one of the charity shops, as some photographers obviously just got rid of a load of photo books because there's a few things down there. There was an Elliot Erwitt and a couple of other bits and bobs. Um, if you if anyone fancies a walk today, um, Very good. you might get some bargains. Um, I'm just going to bring this onto the screen. Grom, if you're watching, what's the score? Egypt <laughs> versus Uruguay, we could have an update here. Um, so what I've got on the screen here is uh, the Mini Click Photo Talks website. So mm -hmm. I'd like to find out from you because you formed this community and now you've got quite a lot of uh, members in the group and um, you know you have done that from Brighton and there's lots of people that are um, not just from the UK you know Brighton yeah. is a is a town no it's a city now it's a city. Brighton and Hove is a city yeah. yeah yeah and but you know it's a provincial city and it's smaller it's on the coast it's not near the main metropolitan hub of london or uh well, any of the other bigger cities on a train yeah it's 50 minutes but you're still you know you're you're still up against it with with uh, in terms of getting people to come along and that kind of thing and you've done it's amazing and now the community is spread you know i'm a london-based person and i've fo always followed mini i haven't been down to brighton but um 
I follow it and I read the website and I love all that kind of stuff. So what mm. I'd like to find out from you, Jim, is really what you've learned by forming this community. What have, what have you mainly taken away from being uh, creating it and being part of it? Uh, well, from a really practical point of view, everything I know about photography, I've learned through Miniclick. Mm -hmm. That's really like every photographer's name, every photo book I own, every photographer who I've referenced in any talk or any work, and uh, and pretty much any of my friends who are photographers, I've met them through Miniclick. I met my wife at a Miniclick talk. So from a purely practical point of view, it has completely changed my life and some of my best friends and, and obviously my wife and other people I've met through it. And my entire education comes from, from that. Um, but, but that's quite personal, I guess. Um, it's what you learn is actually there's a, just a huge hunger for this kind of thing, and people are excited about it. And um, and it, you, if you can just put on something that's regular that people can keep coming back to, and if it's regular, it means that they're not too. If they miss one, it doesn't matter too much because there'll be another one next month, mm -hmm. and they can keep coming back to them. And then once you start seeing that build which happened fairly quickly for us. It's happening. It's happened now in Leeds, but it took a little bit longer because the audience wasn't quite there at that time. But once you see that community build, then you realise how supportive it is. And mm -hmm. uh, I remember Chris Floyd talking a few years ago when he was doing his 140 I know characters. Chris. Yeah, when he was doing his 140 characters project, he was talking about how the community used to be the dark room. And that was where, or, or the processing shops that you would go to to get your images done. I've got that book somewhere. Yeah, I've got it somewhere as well. Yeah, but th that used to be that—that that was where the community was, and th and then it turned to more of a digital thing. But actually, the community can still be face to face because pe because there's a hunger for it, and and a, a, a people come to I think people come to MiniClick, you know, because the speakers are interesting, but also they come to MiniClick because that it's a chance to actually meet each other and chat with each other, and a lot of people come to MiniClick because it's the only time that of the month that they'll see that those people there so they'll go for a catch-up and even to go take that to sort of its finite degree this is cosmic surgery by alma hassel do you hear that that was a cat <laughs> not it just knocked something over um it's it's fury yeah it's flash and fury playing um yeah so but the uh, emily she uh, alma worked on with emily mccauley on that book uh they met at mini click okay. uh eleanor mcnair this is her photographer uh, photographs rendered in play-doh i think the first time she started doing this in public was at a mini click quiz that was run by gordon mcdonald and claire strand so uh, what i've learned is actually this, the community is unbelievably strong um people Could will look just after do me a other. huge favor and hold each book up side by yeah. side um because it'd be really good just to make a, a nice plug this is um this one by alma is actually the dummy of the book it doesn't look the actual book that you can buy doesn't look like this there's a, okay. it's got a sort of gray cover but um but i mean these are both brilliant books to look out and and great sources of inspiration um but you so, see yeah what i've learned from uh mini click is is uh, the I mean, I've learned so much, but the, is that, that that community is completely alive and well, and we haven't witnessed the death of community, and we absolutely mm -hmm. aren't witnessing the death of photography. That's absolute rubbish. What we're mm -hmm. witnessing at the moment is um, is a group of people struggling to manage this new technology that we've had with social media, but actually finding ways to turn that digital presence into something uh, physical, and people meeting up with each other and seeing each other and, and sharing ideas and stories and and actually, it just what it's mini clicks done for me is giving me this incredible sense of optimism for the industry. We're in good hands at the moment. Yeah, um, I've got an example up here of of this with the, of your one of your talks. So this was from the yeah. beginning of May. So yeah, so Jack Latham. So Jack's um, first ever public talk that he ever. I don't know if Jack's still watching, and I'm sure he'll text me if I get any of this wrong, but. <laughs> uh, he actually lives three stories below me in this block of flats, so he might even knock on the door, but. Jack's first ever talk outside of uni was for Brighton. We did a well, for MiniClick in Brighton. We did a talk, an evening of the sort of best of the graduate shows, and we had him and Daniel Lilly and uh, Jordi Ruiz Serrera. Hey mate, hey Pete. Oh, hail um, the gym! <laughs> but we had those guys come and do it. Probably, uh, just uh, he, that's all. He's, he's in full feeler, and uh, <laughs> he's just stood there, hollering out the window. I can so imagine him. 
heavily involved in the community pint in well. hand that, that friday <laughs> that friday lunchtime pint sorry go on jim well i was just going to say pete's really involved in the community as well you know he's mm-hmm. uh He's working with photo and, uh, with Sharon with Photo North at the moment, which hopefully MiniClick will be involved in to some degree. Um, yes, yeah, so that's a great example of how <laughs> how supportive. The what are you trying to say? Is. What are you trying to say, Bench? If I take mm. my glasses off, we separated at birth here. Yeah, hold on. <laughs> um, yes, we're not, but maybe we are. We don't know. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, it's just a, we're just in good hands. I can't remember the question anymore, but photography is going well at the moment. Yeah, yeah Jack, I, I, so I Jack, think we've heard that a lot because there's a lot of the, the the bitching and moaning and all that kind of stuff online. And oh god, the world's going to fall in. It's all gone wrong, and photography yeah. is dead. And and uh, oh, it's all a bit shit for me. Uh, so therefore, it's shit for everybody else. And uh, there's that kind of negativity and that kind of thing. But actually, on the on the flip side, I've seen huge way more positivity and unfortunately you know with a lot of things in life you've got people that are being negative who are five percent but they seem to be a bit louder than the people that are being positive so i think i'm with you on that jim i think there's incidentally jack just texted me to tell me that it was the most important thing mini click was the most important thing that happened in his career um and Ah. look at his career now he's flying and and geordie after doing that talk for us straight out of university won the taylor wessing like a few months later yeah. So it's, it, it is important to do these things. But, yeah, I, there are definitely 100% there are issues that need addressing in photography and, and particularly photojournalism has kind of had its heart ripped out a bit. Mm. Um, and also there's, there's a, a lot of issues around representation and, uh, and diversity and class um, in photography that definitely need discussing so i'm not i definitely don't want to give this idea that it's that we live in a sort of utopia but i also don't think there was a golden age where it was any better than now i think uh you know hopefully we can work through some of these problems that well photography is really reflecting society with a lot of the problems that around you know female representation or or race and gender and, and things like that and sexuality um and and photojournalism definitely I kind of annex that if I'm talking about how optimistic I am about the industry, I kind of annex photojournalism a bit because it's it, that, it, that really with citizen journalism has really affected uh, photography quite a lot. Um, mm. But generally um, as a sort of general overview, I'm, I'm incredibly enthusiastic. And also at the moment, if you, right, we, we, I really truly believe that we are seeing the development at the moment of the most visually literate generation in history. Like the people who are, who, who are sort of in their formative years now, they're sort of late teens and early twenties right now are experiencing a degree of, of quality to, 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 to the visual arts that we haven't ever experienced unless you were at art school. Because if you put the telly on now and you put on an episode of whatever, like mad men, I'll be, I only say that cause I know it's a few years old, but I'm watching it at the moment mm-hmm. and you pause the TV every time you see some a beautifully lit shot, by the end of each episode, an hour episode, you'll have a you'll have fifty or sixty images. I mean, yeah. and what that does is all that does is train people's eyes. And that's that TV is beautiful at the moment. TV was great in the seventies. Yeah, like I, I Claudius is one of my favourite shows. Beautifully written, amazingly performed, but it looks like shit. I mean, it's like flat yeah. lit, maybe deliberately so, but it looks like a play. There's no drama in any of the presentation of it. And also Derek Jacoby's makeup is dreadful. But <laughs> now you're seeing this, this work, this quality of work, and in cinema as well, this quality of work that, that surpasses anything, I think, that, or, or is sort of is more consistently surpassing what's happened before than ever before. There's been more beautiful films shot in the past and more beautiful TV, but with just the consistency and the volume of it right now is incredible. And, and couple that with the fact that everyone's got a camera everyone's on using Instagram or Snapchat and taking pictures and getting used to how cameras work and, and our interaction with them. God, like, and, and, and there's a lot of criticism for these young, younger people who, uh, you know, just doing selfies on Instagram and become Instagram celebrities or YouTubers that are just doing, you know, makeup tutorials or something. But that's just, that's bullshit. They're not going to do that forever. They're not going to be, the criticism is bullshit, not what they're doing. What they're doing is self-expression, and that's unbelievably exciting. It may not be, I might not get it. I don't care about selfies or, or what holiday they've been on. But, but it's self-expression to a visually literate community 
or generation that in 10 years time they probably won't be doing that kind of work because they're growing up and they're exploring themselves once they've started to get into life a little bit more they probably won't be doing the same work or even if they are they might be doing it in a more inventive way god i'm going on a little bit here but i we are in a really exciting period of time for for the visual arts particularly for um your filmmaking and photography which you know are increasingly becoming intertwined as well i think there's a lot to be said about the, the different social media platforms and how people are now actually the penny is dropping and how to actually use each one in a very different way uh, there was a yeah. huge huge noise i mean we're in 20 we're in 2018 now and if you're watching in the future don't we look young <laughs> Uh, it, but it's now 2018 and let's even say let's go back five years which is a massive leap in terms of um, uh, where, we're, where we're at now and what yeah. Facebook, YouTube, Flickr and all the other platforms were like then um, and it became this huge noise so everything was the same everyone was just bombarding these things and I think people are taking a lot more time to go right okay I'm going to put this uh, image on Instagram, but I'm going to put this image up in a different way on yeah. Facebook, and then I'm going to put a video about it on YouTube, and then I'm going to do this. I think people are beginning to learn how to how to use them all to complement each other better. I do, yeah, people are definitely getting used to a degree of editing or a degree of um, mm -hmm. curation of their own work. I, it isn't necessarily the best platform to do it is it Instagram because we know the ones that get the most likes aren't always the ones that tell the most interesting story. But mm. but also I never I've never quite been with that that cool at you know that oh there's too many photographs now there's too many photographers that's I don't know if I don't know if they do but I'm guessing there are not a lot of writers complaining that there are too many books in the world right now mm. or there are too many pens in the world or everyone's got a bloody pen and they can write stuff. I mean it's just <laughs> Oh, just if that if your concern is that some kiddie with a phone is going to take your work away from you, you really yeah, got to look at your own work. Like you've got to address your own work and how you're communicating with the people who are commissioning you. Because your work, if you're our, as professional photographers, our work should really be rising to the top. And again, yeah. I'm annex annexing photojournalism in this because I, I do understand the problems around uh, citizen journal citizen journalism, particularly in the photography world. But generally speaking, as, as talking about photography as a whole, if if you're if that's your concern that there's too many people putting pictures on Instagram, then you've really got to address your place in the in the industry. I think. I, oh God, I'm going to get some hateful comments for that. But I, no, yeah. I think that's completely right. I think most of the people that are bitching and moaning aren't doing anything. They're doing yeah, I mean, I understand. And, you know, I understand and, and even when they are that. doing something, they're doing something really crap. And I think that it has to be said. Because again, it's that negativity, and it's somebody who it's always going. It, it's always people that say something a bit rubbish, and the world is falling in. But they're not actually doing anything. They're not doing anything about it. They're not expressing themselves. They're not trying to work out a, a better way that you know and offer something. There's, there's, it's just this narrow-minded way of looking at things. And thankfully, it's only like a few of them. Um, like actually, Grant has made yeah. great made a great comment here the independent community is strong and supportive and we have all helped each other over the years but the yeah, establishment I assume, I mean, uh, it, it obviously hasn't grant was um incredibly uh uh incredibly important for miniclick particularly in the early days he was incredibly supportive of us and, and hooked us up he introduced us to pete dench and, and a lot of other people okay so that community in action and rupert i yeah I, i'm aware of the definitely aware of the, the issues around photojournalism that's a, that's definitely a discussion that needs to be had mm -hmm. but but generally I'm, I'm very excited about i mean god when i'm like what am i i'm 36 now even when i'm 40 like what's it going to look like but imagine when i'm 80 like that's what i think about like what are we going to be doing it's exciting times man yeah it's good it's ter it, it, in fact, we've been talking a bit about, um, and partly why, I, as, as I've talked to more photographers online and interacted with them and, um, you know, from a network anyway, but, like, what really flagged up for me was being 15-year-old me again. And 15-year-old me was printing pictures and basically seeking out any – they were all – sort of independent bookshops then really but yeah I can't find any book photo book of any description it was very hard work it was all john hedgeco and learning learning how to do photography or mm. the odd Klein book 
you know, that, yeah. that was it, you know, and uh, 15 year old me was <coughs> just fo foaming at the mouth to try and get some some uh, educational books or, or interactive, there's no communities. I wasn't going to join a camera club. That was the uh, old boys <laughs> down the road who would never let me in to the camera club <laughs> because they all own cameras and they're all like 50 and they don't want a kid in there. <clears throat> so, but now I'm weirdly, it's 15 year old me again because I, I'm like, I'm, I'm uh, rolling around social media. You can connect with all you guys very quickly, mm. learn very quickly, put pim images up. Uh, send a tweet to a mega famous photographer who might respond. I mean, that's yeah. madness to me. I was like, Christ, you'd have to really jump through hopes to try and even get a connection with somebody, what, find out their telephone number. You, and you'd yeah. have to jump through hoops to go and find a telephone number or some sort of address that you'd send a letter to. Now you can just go direct to the person. That's really what's so exciting. And if people yeah. are slagging that off and, and and don't understand the value of connection then I, I think that they're well they're better off just checking it in to be honest well i can sort of i get it i do get I'm a bit ranty people. today Ran, ranty friday jim <laughs> you can start that as a regular feature i get it i, get, I do understand people's uh you know people's apprehension and stuff but i do really think when we look back in you know in the when we're you know when people are studying photography in however many years time this will be quite a critical point. Um, I mean, there, I, I know, again, I want to say I'm not universally enthusiastic. I, there are definitely things around around gender and and race and class in mm. photography that, that really uh, and rep, 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 representation of, of these different groups that um, really need addressing and yeah. urgently. Um, but I, there are good people out there attempting to do that, um, uh, that and that work needs to carry on. Yeah, we've, so it's not got, universal, we've, been, but... we've been suggested a few. Um, um, I specifically, when I started these, looked at the especially the points that you brought up, and to just literally get these off the ground, just threw out all the threw a fishing net out, saying uh, uh, we're going to do this. Who's interested? It's literally mm -hmm. like that, and slowly we got people coming back and that kind of thing, and then it was purely down to sh down to scheduling. And people coming back, oh, I'm available this day and I'm available that day. Mm. That um, put out an equal measure, especially across uh, gender. And we were then, through circumstance, came back reasonably unbalanced with doing them. And, you know, we've done over 20 now. Mm. And we've been, I've, I've held Ben on making sure that, that there was an equal, um, uh, equal voice without it being too, you know, obvious, you know, that's, that's mental, but, um, you know, just, you can get called out for these things straight away. Oh no, you're, well, you're not re representing everything. It's, you know, it's some, some, in our case, it's been down to uh, getting as many people on board and, and trying to go that route. It does come down to availability and, and, and who's around. I'm full on for getting involved with more individual groups and, um, people that are involved in, uh, aspects of uh, race uh, I know that there's a few groups that have had some great suggestions from people see that's what part of a community is I started getting all loads of really good feedback from people and um, especially uh, female there were some female only groups as well and um, you know I wouldn't have really uh, they're not, not on my radar so it's been massively helpful with people coming straight back you know I think there is a big debate out there I think that there, there should be that would be a great great panel uh discussion or something like that because there ha has been the uh the stats that i've been told about people who are either learning or in photography in further education and higher education and then falling off the cliff when it comes to being in employed version it's this huge gap um yeah. which is obviously there is a reason behind that and it'd be nice to talk about it and and to you know, and it is all about inclusion, isn't it? Creativity and photography and all that kind of well, stuff. It's not just it's not just inclusion, is it? It's the photography's power is is in storytelling and communicating. It, mm -hmm. If it's photojournalism or documentary, that can be quite a literal thing. You're literally telling a story or or demonstrating a, a, a cause or something like that. Or or if it's more of an art 
or, or you know conceptual work then you're discussing an idea or introducing an idea or a conversation into into a space but photography is that's photography's power is to discuss that stuff and and we know it's not it's not conjecture we know absolutely know that everything is healthier and a lot more interesting if we speak with many different voices i'm talking when i say we i mean the industry so it's it's not just it it's not um it's not inclusion is it it's just reflecting the society that we live in yeah. and everything all the work that's being produced at the moment at some point will become a historical document so at the tate at the moment i've got an exhibition on painting after the first world war and i don't think those painters at the time were thinking oh we're going to have an exhibition down the line but people will look back on our work that mm. we're all producing at the moment in this period of time and it has to reflect the society that we live in otherwise otherwise we're really being quite irresponsible if it doesn't and quite often frankly the best people to document uh, the lives of working class syrian refugees might not be a middle class white man uh you know yeah. so and that has been the and i don't want to get too much into the sort of middle class white man trope but that has been the norm in photography for generations mm. and sometimes it might be but but actually if we can just have a few more different voices i think it's kind of incumbent on uh photography organizations to to make an effort and also the, the idea of representation has never the problem with representation has never ever been for instance that there aren't enough talented female photographers out there for every robert kappa there was a gerda taro it's never been an issue of uh, a lack of talent it's just been nobody bothering to make an effort to to talk about it or to highlight these talented photographers so i think we're seeing a change a shift change a paradigm change um, any resistance to that is futile from from certain people in the industry who are sort of scared about losing their position of power that they've held for a few hundred years and uh, and hopefully again in 50 years time we'll look back at this as a real shift in in how photography is viewed and how it works and how the industry works and how different people from different groups are represented yeah jesus yeah. christ rich i'm getting I'm a bit totally, uh, i'm totally I'm totally with you boxy. <laughs> Um, so that's it really isn't it yeah i think that it's important i think it's important to talk about it and you know we'll keep continue to to talk about it uh i you know with with um the female photographers that we've had on here so much funny enough we don't talk about it and well i don't know if you do need to talk about it with every i don't think every female photographer needs to be asked what it's like what is it like being a female photographer no not that i didn't mean that it's more about their sort of uh that you know how uh, oh, how would you put it not advice that's, that's rubbish and um, like more you know the, the, that kind of interaction because it's like taking you're part of the community you're taking taking an interest you know unless, unless you ask unless you go there and, and and say you know what how is this you know what what is it how is this for you um the fantastic in fact funny enough my my, uh, uh, quite you know it's definitely 50 50 and my favorite photographers are all female so th- it's not like i uh, would like all male photographers so I, I look at my my list and it's like oh no there's definite in fact the top my top one is um vivian meyer is my yeah uh, you know so we, but again i don't know if this is going to rumble on and rumble on and that's a good thing i think we should um, i don't think we need to i don't think I don't think we need to be highlighting that. I don't think it needs me as a man to talk about my favourite female photographers. Do you know what I mean? I just think yeah. it's just incumbent to – As I run an organisation that, that promotes photographers and, yeah. and does what it can to, to, to help people promote their work. I, I, don't think, I don't think it's any useful part of the conversation for me to talk about you know f- female photographers whose work i like just for just to have that conversation for or the for fact me of, to, or yeah. for me to even ask female photographers what it's like to be a, a woman working in industry that's a conversation that should be had but i don't know if it should be led by me as a man particularly but yeah, it otherwise is otherwise you end up like your mansplaining and that's well, uh, well, just, um, it's just and unnecessary and yeah. I, I, but it is incumbent on me as someone who runs an organization to to try and make ensure that the, the work that i'm putting out there or the or the speakers that i'm putting on reflect um reflect the society that we live in and i yeah. think mini clicks pretty good at that very good at that on on um gender and sexuality i think we we 
need to look a bit more at race. We've we've been quite good at it, but I don't think we're fully finding a way to reflect that at the moment. But certainly with with gender, I think, and sexuality, we've always done a, a pretty good job of presenting a, 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 or making a more accurate representation of the society that we exist in. Uh, Kirsten Hacker she says, happy to chat about self-representation in Africa. I've been working with the University of Zambia and the Visual Arts Council of Zambia about photographic education in Zambia for the past decade. Contact me. That's really kind of you. Thank you, Kirsten. Yeah, drop her a line. Um, if you, I tell you what, Kirsten, I'll tell you what, it'll be easier because... Um, Rich, can you just have a chat with Kirsten for two seconds because I've had too much tea and I've got all excited. Do it. I'm just going to use the bathroom. Do I'll it. Be back in uh, 30 seconds. Hold on. <laughs> right. Okay, let's go here. Right. Okay, so Kirsten, thanks ever so much for that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put um, a message on here. So what I would like you to do, Kirsten, is email this email address. Uh, which I can't actually put up on the screen at the moment, which is a bit annoying. Um, tell you what we'll do. She's laughing at the moment. I want you to send this uh, to, let me get this up on the screen. We'll be back in a minute. I'd like you to send me an email. It's live at pixelrights.com. And we're just going to wait for Bye, Jimbo mate. to come back. He's back. Um, back in. I'm back in. Kirsten, you can send it to live at pixelrights.com. Okay. All right. So what, what did I miss? You were, That was the quickest ever, Jim. I'm incredibly efficient. <laughs> um, Ian Price. Um... Oh, what was that? Hold on a second. I'm just trying to get it up on, on the screen. Uh, is this a first? He's gone to the toilet. Yes. Um, Rupert River, he says, so, so looking forward to Pixel Rights interviewing more photographers from different countries and different parts of society. Mm. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, and Ian Price, he says, of course, on the course, sorry, on the course I am doing at Glossy Uni, I think it's fair to say there are far more females than males looking to come into the industry. Yeah, I was hearing some, the stats are along the lines of, um, yeah, the, along the lines of, um, I think it was something like, it's like 80% female in female and higher education. Something I mean, that's, like that. that's not just photography. That's a problem in architecture as well. Um, and, you know, Is there's that right? A, there's, oh, okay. It's a huge problem in architecture. Um, education is actually fairly evens, but afterwards it, it it becomes there's a huge drop off, and there's all sorts of studies into why that happens and everything. Um, right. So yeah, I, and you know we know the reasons for that. It's the re same reasons. It, it's historical social reasons that have been going on for hundreds of years. Um, why you know all the reasons why role models and things like that don't ex well are only just starting to exist. Yeah. Um, or starting to come be given a platform at the forefront of the industries. Wow. Yeah. Have I dug myself into a hole? Have I taught myself? I think into we've, a hole? we've covered a lot of bases oh, here. So what I would love for everybody to do now is to go to, uh, I would love you all to go to this. Um, at some point, I want you to go to mini click talks website. Okay. And go and check it out and have a bit of a read. Rich, uh, with, are you wrapping yeah. up here? This sounds like you're wrapping up. I will Ask, be. Yeah. Let's wrap up on something like lovely and light. Positive. Give yeah. me something. Give me something. Uh, a nice light, because I feel like I've I've gone off on one a little bit there. So uh, you, you've been quite ranty, but ranty in a good way. Well, um, hopefully, it's considered. I'll like, tell you who I'd like to talk about is um, oh. someone who I don't know, but um, and that is. Let me just get it up here. Oh, attention. Rob Ball. <laughs> Rob? Yeah. And yeah. I think he is a photographer from Brighton. Uh, I think he's in London, actually. Or oh, is he London? Okay. Phenomenal. He does a lot of coastal things. So um, yeah. I like his work. And you've had him on your uh, talks down in Brighton. And, yeah. uh, I, and also he's on the, the uh, 
on your blog here. So uh, I just wanted to sort of flag him up. He was he's sort of a, a photographer that I've um, beginning uh, been following for a little while, and I just wanted to sort of um, be a bit positive. And if people hadn't heard of him before, go and go and have a look. I know there's loads of other photographers. I know there is, but it was just when we were flicking through, I just wanted to have a. a well, uh, Rob's works uh, really interesting because he 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 done all that coastal work and the great I think the, was it Coney Island he did some great work yes the coastal stuff which is quite sort of it's it's actually it's beautiful work but when he used to be a, a forensic photographer for the Met did he so, really so the the last talk he did with us which was the same time as Jack did a talk with us he was talking about his life as a as a, a, a you know as as a crime scene photographer and photographing some of the the most horrific things you know um so he and he was doing that whilst he was studying his uh his degree his ma i think actually at um one of the london unis i can't remember so he was going into this arts degree to do feedback on what photographs had done that week and he was taking in stuff that he'd done at work because he didn't have time to do other projects and he was taking in stuff of you know parts of bodies on slabs and uh and all of the art school kids were like was going on about how amazing this work was and he was like yeah this is like my work <laughs> this is what I'm, I'm doing so he's gone from this forensic photography background very technical work to to doing this uh, he's a big fan of rob his work's great and if, if you ever get the chat to ever get the chance to chat with him he's very he talks very eloquently about his work it's really very open, guy. Yeah. oh it's very good uh, there was one thing i'd like to do here we have a youtube channel now, if you haven't subscribed to it yet, I'd really love it if you could go along to YouTube, find the Pixel Rights channel, uh, because what I do is I repurpose these uh, interviews and uh, they go up on here as well. So you might be able to use it for your blogs or uh, you might share it about, and it's a different mm. way of interacting with us. So I'd really appreciate it. If you could go and uh, subscribe, we've been asked a little bit this week where else people can go and watch them. So I just wanted to flag that up as you can see. There's, right. there's loads there. You Come to MiniClick because most of the people you've had on this have done MiniClick talks in the past. Oh, okay. So, uh, okay. Well, there's, a, there's a big overlap there. So get get yourself down to MiniClick. I will do. <laughs> yeah, a, a mini click is also when you go onto the mini click website, miniclick.co.uk, that you can go and follow the events that are put on by Jim. And uh, that's uh, a good way of you uh, all joining the, the uh, community and, and us all making an effort and getting down to the seaside. It's a bit of an ex uh, it's a good um, excuse, isn't it? Yeah. So um, this weekend, I am off to this. Hey. Nice. Which is on at the photographer's gallery. So, in fact, I might go later or tomorrow, and I wanted and to recommend it. So, Tish Alex and... Prager as well at the same time. Sorry, so Tish, it... Tish's shows, Tish Merthyr's shows on, and Alex Prager in the in the photographer's gallery as well. Oh, is it really? Okay, fantastic. Mm. That's a, a double header. So, um, I just wanted to recommend that because that's going to be on for a little while. And if you are passing through London at the photographer's gallery, do go and see it because it's very good. Rupert River, he says, yes, a uh, great mini click night, the talk by Rob Ball and Jack Latham. He's yeah, it was great. Yeah, yeah, really good. Yeah, that's we had um, a good, a good, Keith, good Johnson come down, who was a criminal psychologist. Ah. Talked alongside Jack. And um, we try, we're trying to do that quite a lot, have someone who isn't necessarily a photographer come and talk about photography's role. That was really interesting. Uh, yeah, good talk about it. Yeah. So um, where's the cats? They've legged it? Oh, I don't know. They're off on manoeuvres. I don't know. They've, they've found something else to do. So uh, it's been fantastic talking to you. Yeah, thank you, Rich. Thanks for... And it's been really Bye. good. And uh, thank you ever so much for everybody that's watching and watched and commented and interacted and Peter Dench uh, <laughs> pointing out that we are separated at birth, Jim. <laughs> and I can't tell how tall you are, but I am... Not very. Quite, I'm quite tall. So we're oh, probably... It's like Danny DeVito uh, and Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> That's right. So, yeah, as I said, I really appreciate everybody who's been watching this. And, and uh, if you want to watch any more and you're on the Pixel Rights website, uh, please like that. If you're on the Mini Clip Talks website, uh, Facebook page, go and like that and yeah. uh, interact with us on our YouTube channel as well. And, you know, it's part of a community. I'd like to point out as well, you can go and find Jim on twitter 
and Instagram and go yep. and say hi to him and follow him. Because... Also, we do, MiniClick do free portfolio reviews or help with work that's in progress um, as well. So if anybody wow. ever wants a, a second pair of eyes, um, it might be mine, it might be one of the rest of our team, but um, we've all got quite a varied set of backgrounds. So if anybody ever wants to catch up over a coffee and talk about their work, I am happy to meet them, or one of our team is happy to meet as well. So um, that's all part of the community. So yeah, that sounds good. fantastic. A shout. Okay, well, thanks ever so much again, Jim. It's been great talking to you. I'm going to end the broadcast Thank now. You. And thanks ever so much to everybody else. I hope you guys all get on board for uh, the ones that we have in the future. So have right. a good time over the weekend and see you later. You too. Thanks, everyone.